We've got Yuventia Maetsu, Deputy CEO of the Inca Group, IKEA, Terry Delaporte, CEO and Managing Director of Wipro, and we've got Barbara Fry, EVP and CEO of Industrial Automation and member of the Executive Committee at Schneider Electric. Please join me in welcoming them to the stage. There is, there Thank is. you. Great. Thank you all so much for being here. We're very excited to kick things off with all of you. Uh, we come to Davos, as Malika was mentioning, to talk about the world's biggest problems. And in your companies, you get the opportunity to address some of those problems by building a sustainable business, right? The first question I have for all of you is, what is your one sentence pitch on what you hope to do at your business to build a responsible roadmap as we head towards 2030? And Thierry, we'll start with you. Okay, all right, thank you, Madison. And, and, good, and good evening, everybody. It's great to see you all. You know, um, you know, obviously, very important topic. I would say, you know, we definitely have a roadmap. What matters to me is that it is lived and embraced by every single of my employees. And so frankly, the, the objective I have for me is that, you know, through all these different chapters, make sure that people know what to do and how to contribute and have an impact on it. Mm -hmm. I loved that one sentence. That was great. Barbara? <laughs> So in Schneider Electric, we have reinvented ourselves during almost 200 years to be where we are today. So we are a completely different company than we were 100 years ago. And um, I think we have the simple sentence, you need to do well to do good. Mm. And, and I think uh, we started also to have our first sustainability report almost 20 years ago when nobody was really thinking about it. And that's the guiding thing now going also towards 2030, 2040 and 2050. Great, great. Even, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it's good business to be good business. It has to be and it should be. And for us, it's about integrating sustainability inside the business model to build a new low cost economy to make a better life for the many people more affordable and sustainable. Mm. Perfect. Well, Thierry, I want to start by digging into what you mentioned. It sounds like leaning into culture is really important to you. What is the first step that you take when coming in as CEO right before a global pandemic or right after, I believe, right? What do you do to sort of institute that good culture at your company? First, first of all, I joined Wipro on July 6, 2020, yeah. right in the middle of the right pandemic. Right in the thick so of it, So yeah. I'm one of these who has tried to do his job from, you know, his bedroom, basically, yeah. at the beginning. And, and that was quite special. When we look at uh, being responsible, there's, there's multiple angles to that, right? You have an angle which is, how do we make sure that as a company we carry, you know, the right values of integrity, the values of authenticity, you know, being just uh, sincere in what we are doing. Diversity, you know, how do we deploy diversity? How do we become a company that is truly global and embrace diversity and inclusion, mm. uh, social good. I mean, how on earth could we focus on driving objectives, targets, drive performance without paying attention to what it can have as an impact to the social good? One thing I am incredibly proud of, and you know, not, not me, I inherited it. Wipro is a unique company, right? Uh, Wipro has a founder, the, the founder chairman, Azim Premji, uh, created a philanthropic foundation with an endowment in which, you know, which, which, which is made of, you know, which makes it the fifth largest uh, foundation in the world. Two thirds of the equity uh, ownership of Wipro is irrevocably uh, committed to this foundation trust. And so imagine that you know, every time we perform more, every time we do a better results at the end of the day, two thirds of it will actually serve social, for social good in the world. Mm. That is something that is driving obviously a lot of excitement, but also a sense of belonging in the organization across the 260,000 employees. The final point, obviously, is around sustainability, talking about the environment, 
sure. right? And, and we'll probably talk more about that, but you know, whether it is in the way we are being you know, uh, clean, you know, focus on the net zero emission, how do we are making sure that we are contributing to you know, the macro target set you know, around the world, but also how do we advise our clients as consultants, as partners, about how they can do a good job as well. Mm -hmm. So this is a massive. Uh, that's you know, a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a. It's not an easy job to be the CEO of a big company, I imagine. So you've got a lot on your plate, um, Barbara. I want to talk a little bit about what Thierry was mentioning: sustainability. That can mean so many different things. What does it mean to you? So sustainability, as we see it in Schneider Electric, has different dimensions. On one hand, it's really the CO2 emissions the climate targets that we have, the pledge that we have set and working towards it. Mm -hmm. And there is a good way and trajectory now because for the first time since many, many years, the short term goals and the medium term goals are coming together. So we need to save energy short term and this will help our mid term goals. But it's not only this one, it's as you mentioned, it's diversity. We have clear plans how we want to hire diversity, not only in gender, but also in age, experience, is it uh, in, in the different continents. It's also biodiversity, where we put a big emphasis on, and then also in the local community. In Schneider Electric, we empower a lot the local organizations, and each local organization has also the mandate to do good things in their community and really drive those projects. And I think these are around 11 goals we are pursuing in a relatively strict manner and uh, has been proven to be successful. Mm. How do you reach out to those local organizations and, and what are some of the, the challenges of going local? How, how do you do that successfully? It's very much about trust. You need strong local leaders. Yeah. And I think the trust to the local leaders is really a key ingredient. And the local leaders then will, based on the input also from what we put globally, the, 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 the initiatives locally. And of course, you need to adopt them. You cannot talk in all the environments about LGBTI. You cannot talk about in all the environments about certain things. So we adopt it according to the culture also. And that makes it really powerful. But again, trust is a big element in really being successful in your rollout. Yeah, yeah, and we're going to talk more about that as well. But I want to go to you. Does, actually, let me ask the group, who here has IKEA products in your home? Anyone? OK, great, love that. Um, I live in New York City, so it's pretty much my entire apartment. So I'm very excited to get to ask you some questions about the company. Um, you want to ask for discounts, maybe? Well, I would never do such a thing as a journalist, please. Um, but, um, I, but your, your CEO, Jesper, and I know that you, you work with him, of course, has said that people, they're not going to pay a premium for sustainability. They expect the company to take the hit before they do. But what does that look like in practice, right? How do you do that? Yeah, I think it's a good question. And we clarify internally what, what performance looks like. How do we know if we are doing a good job? How do we evaluate people? Because this is the That's way point. to measure exactly the question you're asking. And we clarify internally that for us, performance is about creating value in four things. One is a better homes for the many people mm. in the product we offer, but also in the way that this product contributes to a better life. For example, in reducing water or reducing waste or reducing electricity. The second thing is about better life for the many people, which is our own employees or co-worker, which is a supply chain but also it's about the many, the many people we touch. In the, and this is about gender equality, pay gap, diversity, inclusion. It's really about securing the, the people side of the sustainability, not only the climate side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the social dimension is quite relevant. The third one is about better planet for all. And this is, we have decided to become climate positive by 2030 by reducing more greenhouse gas emissions that we uh, create. Mm -hmm. And finally, it's about better company for the long term, but the company has to be sustainable. That's why we have very conservative financial policies. And then similar to, uh, to Wybro, we, we are owned by a foundation. There's no dividend that goes to the private pocket of any shareholder. So in that sense, the ultimate goal of the company is to support the many people via our business. So the business is a mean to achieve something greater. And then, of course, to support the Inca Foundation to achieve its charitable purpose. And when you clarify this, you then end up 
you eliminate or mitigate the dilemmas to say the planet or the wallet. Eh? Mm -hmm. I don't know anyone who wants to destroy the planet, but I know many people who are lost in the house. And by moving from dilemmas to polarities, we feel a bit, we amplify the framework. Mm -hmm. And this is what a good performance at the end of the day should be. Well, this is exactly what I want to pick up on because like you said, not everyone has the luxury to not have to necessarily decide between wallet and climate. I wonder if given your perspectives, you have advice for others, Thierry, I want to start with you. Um, for others in the room who do have to think about that capital allocation, who are thinking, you know, I have to take money away from this pile to put it into the sustainability pile. What's your advice to them on how to make those choices? You know, I'm not sure I can give uh, uh, any advice. I think I would only uh, reflect on, you know, how I'm doing it. And for uh, if ever it is applied, can be applied to any other business, certainly. When you look at an investment, um, you know, it's clear that you could, you could either say, okay, I'm going to focus on the return on investment and the payback and completely ignore the uh, social aspect of it. I like what you say, Jovencio, which is, you know, wallet or planet. Uh, I like to say that um, you, you need to shift from shareholder capitalism to stakeholder capitalism, which is really, instead of only managing your shareholders, you certainly need to manage them, but you need to manage all the stakeholders, which, is, which are your employees, their families, you, you know, your, your suppliers, your, your clients. Um, and the partners, the ecosystem, the entire environment. When you do reflect on it seriously, then decisions about you know investing in an area that is you know uh, sustainable or not takes a, a very different dimension, in my view. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's, it's really critical. And I wonder to what extent for all of you, your employees push the envelope a little bit as well when it comes to these conversations. Barbara, I wonder if you can talk about the next generation of workers who are coming to your company. Do you find that younger folks, Gen Z folks, are coming in and saying and, and kind of demanding what they want to see from a company that they work for? Absolutely, absolutely. That's uh, on the agenda every day. Yeah. And this is why I think today you have to be a company who puts sustainability on the forefront of the business model. Because otherwise you don't attract any more talents. Mm -hmm. And I'm absolutely convinced to be a great company, you need to attract great people. And of course it helps if you are um, very advanced in saying, hey, look, this is what we do as a company, not only that we want to be sustainable in the way how we operate, we also want to be sustainable for our customers. So the solution that we bring to our customer helps them to save energy, they become more productive, they can decarbonize their production. And I think that's extremely attractive for young people to jump in. And uh, we are also challenged, and of course, on many levels. So mm. there's never enough in that sense. Yeah. Thierry, I saw you kind of shaking your head at that. Did you want to add? Anything? You know, I've no doubt that our employees, you talk about the employees, and I've no doubt that, you know, they, they really have a, a, a deep understanding of what it means and what they would expect the companies to do. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, it happens that we disappoint them, you know, because of all the different, you know, uh, uh, priorities of a day. But I think for them to feel they play a key role, they need to get a certain transparency, a visibility on the metrics. Mm. That's where, you know, measuring all these different aspects of what it is to be, uh, you know, uh, responsible. We need, it, it doesn't mean that having metrics is all. I you mean our sustainability index, for instance. Before Correct, metrics, yeah. exactly. But having it visible and broken down into elements that people feel I can contribute to it makes a huge difference. Yeah. If suddenly you realize, I take a small example in our, in our industry, which is that, you know, actually um, consultants travel. Sure. And before the pandemic, right, consultants were traveling systematically to visit clients. With the COVID pandemic, we actually realized that you can do a great job and continue to be quite productive without having to travel. So what does it change? Now, it doesn't mean you want your people to stay at home every day. It's a lot more complex, but you know, you probably want to give them the tools that they have the ability to make the right decisions and decide whether it makes sense or not to travel. Sure. and be just more conscious. Yeah, yeah. 
it's not just your employees getting in on the sustainability goals, but it's also your consumers. And I wonder if you can talk about that from the perspective of IKEA with the kind of circular economy <coughs> approach that you have. Yeah, so it's a good question, both the co-worker and the, and the consumer, because at the end of the day, why do we need to be sustainable? It's because the consumer demands you to do that, the co-workers demands you to do that, <laughs> but also the business demands you to do that, because somehow people are waiting, but sometimes it's too late, too late, so it's too early, too early, and suddenly it's too late. Eh? So you have to act. In the consumer, we ran this um, big survey with a thousand of consumers around the world, and then um, nine out of 10, we are uh, really um, worried about the climate. Eh? Mm. Seven out of 10 wanted to take action, and only four out of 10 were taking enough actions. So there is a big gap in between what consumers really want to and the lack of knowledge and the solution. So we have to help consumers for a better life at home, and this is the role we have. How can we really provide solution to the consumer we touch the life of many people, billions of people in the world, and we have a big responsibility to support consumers, and it has to be affordable. You cannot pay a premium. The day sustainability is expensive, it's gone. Mm -hmm. So the only way is to build economy of scale, to build really the technology that helps you to make it really the new low-cost model. Mm -hmm. And being smart in resources is to be smart in climate and low-cost. Low so that's what I merge beautifully, purpose and profit. Mm. Barbara, did you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I think it's very much people always think, and we've touched it now several times, you have to compromise between sustainability and making a business. And I fully disagree with that statement. Mm -hmm. The technology to really reduce CO2 emissions is here. It has even become more affordable in the last 10 years because we have all the means for digitalization. And that's the starting point of every reduction you need first to measure and then you need to see in what kind of status you are and then you can reduce it. And it's really important end to end that you're going to implement it. So I buy the wood from someone. Uh, the wood is produced in a certain way. Uh, we have from mines the, the material. So, and everyone in this chain has to really follow this one. And I'm, that's why I'm absolutely convinced it's not a compromise. It's always a business. And uh, I think this has come to a, a, an acceleration I have never seen before, and I think this is extremely positive. Do you think we're past having to talk to each other about the business case for climate change, or does everyone get that now, or are we still needing to have that conversation? I believe that you can have a rational approach to this uh, topic, and so I think you, 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 you need, it's part of the business case. It does, you, you do need a business case, but it's part of the business case. The fact that, you know, it's driving, you know, uh, uh, good for the planet is part of the business case. Mm -hmm. I agree entirely with you, Thierry. As an example, we invested in a company called Retour Matras. Only that company is recycling one million mattresses in the Netherlands. One million. One million? One million. Just in the Netherlands? Only in the yeah. Netherlands. There are 40 million mattresses to be recycled in Europe. And 40 million mattresses is three billion uh, tons of lead CO2. And then this company is profitable today. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, you need to partner, not only with the industry, and you need to partner with governments. So the business case works when you really come together. That's mm -hmm. why everybody, nobody, n no one can solve everything, but everybody has to do something. And when you combine that, the business works. As Barbara, you said earlier when we yeah. were talking, you can't do it alone, yeah. right? Yeah, you have to work in an ecosystem. Yeah. Exactly like the circular economy is really, really important also in our business. But it's a heck lot of work to make it happen. And we make it happen in some countries because we know the installed base. But as soon as it goes into the widespread of the global business, it's very demanding. So you need to work together between regulator between the different stakeholders in the whole chain to make it happen. And that's exactly where the World Economic Forum can play a very good role here, to make this coming together. Because, again, you need, you need to do it together in that sense.
Where do you see more opportunity for partnership? Is it from governments who could regulate in a way that makes it easier to do what you want to do? Or is it maybe from competitors who you could team up with to, to achieve some of your goals? Where do you see more opportunity? Thierry? I think, you know, uh, you, you, you laid it out. I think there are situations where Com competitive uh, companies from a given industry must sit down together and review and agree to things, the way to address some of the issues that are pan industries. Mm -hmm. And I think not doing it is criminal. And so I think it's not necessarily always easy, but I think it should be the responsibility of the leaders to look at that and reflect on it and see as leaders, how do we collectively agree to that? Then you said it, I think, you know, companies can have, and I've, I've sensed it over the last years that companies have a, they feel they have a bigger role to play with, you know, the local regulations and with the different, you know, agencies and, and, and governments. And I think, I, I frankly feel that, you know, there's always more that we should do, but there, there is a lot where companies are driving change and, and, and forcing, you know, those, those, uh, regulations to be to be addressed and reconsidered and so but I absolutely agree this you know you always feel when you look at those uh, topics around sustainability or even you know being uh, s social engagement that you know you cannot do much alone right mm -hmm. but everyone has to contribute right 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 consumer co-worker CEO we governments we've all we've all got to get in on this on this fight um, I'm gonna go to audience questions in a moment but I want to ask all of you to give me a one sentence answer again if I can be so selfish as to do that can all of you quickly tell me the one solution that's giving you the most hope right now when it comes to your sustainability goals uh, Barbara, I'll start it's with easy you. For me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm passionate about energy savings. Yeah. This is a great time now to really get the momentum on energy savings with such high energy prices. Yeah. I, that's for me the biggest wish, so to say. Yeah, yeah. If I continue with the energy, we started to invest in energy years ago. We have invested more than 3 billion euros in renewable, basically in wind and solar. And today we produce more energy than the energy we consume. So it's actually it's working from the P&L, from the uh, financial point of view as well. And this is giving a lot of credibility that we can do more as we will do 100% EV, 100% heating and cooling. So everything will work in that way. But the basic thing, if there is only one, is be close to the many people. Mm -hmm. And this is why we play a big role in society. The closer we are to the life of the many people, the better for the society. Thierry? Technology plays a key role in uh, uh, addressing a lot of these issues. And I think, you know, we have not only the opportunity to work on technology, we are, our employees are experts in technology, but they also are very, they, they understand well the environment of our clients. And so we have this opportunity to contribute not only in our sphere, but also in all in our interactions with our clients in particular. And that's, you know, where I feel we have, you know, the biggest impact and that's where our people love you know engaging because they feel you know that suddenly the, the, the potential of you know impact of their action is really multiple folds. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well said yeah uh, we're gonna get to audience questions now if you have one and you haven't submitted it yet this is the final moment to attempt to get a question up here uh, we have a question from Sanjay on corporate social responsibility saying um, while CSR is at the heart of a firm's community involvement should governments be specific with areas firms should engage basis of nations uh, developmental priorities say a social impact program that's measured for results I wonder Barbara if you if you want to talk about that uh, is the question going to the direction? Should we add a, a, like a financial, how we do the financial KPI? I, I think, or? I think the way I'm understanding it is, you, you want, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. hello, <laughs> yeah, perfect. No, I think, you know, what, what we're seeing is, uh, especially in emerging countries, where corporates are really involved from a CSR perspective because there's a mandate that they've got to do it from a financial perspective. I'm wondering whether there's a way we do, to do it from a social impact yeah. perspective, right? Because I see a lot of the value being lost. So therefore, I mean, given that the three of you are at the heart of many of the decisions, is it something you want from government or is it something mm. you want private sector to be playing that role? 
so oh, absolutely true. And indeed, if you look at the world, I mean, every country or every government has its own, you know, policies and focus and priorities. And, you know, you, you mentioned it, you know, different level of development, different level of, you know, uh, priorities towards one of the different chapters of, uh, of uh, sustainability, if you like, in, in broad terms. But I think uh, absolutely company, uh, uh, governments, you know, mandating is always triggering a lot of thinking and action on the, com on the company side. I think companies must push as well because I think companies need coherence. The difficulty for a global company is to deal with all those different, you know, regulations around the world. It would be so great if we could have, you know, obviously, you know, it's, being, it's almost being naive to believe that it's possible, but as much as we harmonize across countries for companies when we deploy something we can deploy it around the world and that is so at the end of the day we need to push on both sides yeah i fully fully agree to that one it needs both for instance we had in china uh, an initiative running for the green yoda we called it where we really wanted to be a role model in the different provinces, how can you be a smarter and a greener company helping to sell energy, to be more sustainable? And uh, it got some momentum. And on the other side, the government was really looking for these kind of things. And we also got appraised by this one. So it needs both, both sides on it. I can hardly agree more. And, and companies, we have a big role to play. I agree entirely with the government, but let's start also with the companies as well. And it's, about, it's not about being climate positive. It's about reducing inequalities that comes mm -hmm. from the climate change. Yeah. It's about the transition. It's about the, the, the society uh, uh, coming after the planet. We do this working with, the, with all the social programs, skill for employment, and then supporting refugees also to have uh, opportunities. And IKEA Foundation is supporting massively both in the, in the better livelihood for, for the many people. So climate and people are extremely connected and we have a big role to play. I want to try to squeeze in this last question from Henrietta because I really wish I had asked this. It's a great question. Do you have a company internal price on carbon or other guide rails to decarbonize and get to net zero? A price? Yeah, like do you, do you charge yourself basically? Do you tax yourself every time you have to yeah. Can I say yeah. something here yeah. because <laughs> I have two, two views here. Yeah. On one side, I think carbon tax question. is good to measure the cost. Yeah. However, my strong belief is that it's not enough because you can still approve investments. Is it 60, 100 euro? A, what is it? A, uh, is it, is it? Applying the carbon tax. So the important thing is not the carbon tax. The important thing is that you build in the decision making of the company all the sustainability standards. And if you don't pass that, then you don't approve the investment. So the carbon tax, it's a reactive way, it's good, but it's not enough. The important thing is that all investment follow the standards. I fully agree with these statements. It starts with the R&D process, it goes to how you purchase, it goes to the whole company. Mm. And that's the decision thing. We, we also don't have a carbon tax internally. Being proactive instead of reactive. Correct. Absolutely, yeah, correct. same philosophy at Weeper, absolutely. Yeah, great. Well, I think that's a lovely place to leave it. Thank you all so much for listening, your great questions, and thank, thank you, you to our panelists. Thank you so much. I'll hand it over to Malika. Thank you,